And my understanding is that the HSE estimates that 3,000 women were diagnosed with cervical cancer over the past 10 years. So the question is, what about the remaining 1,500 women? And are you saying tonight that those 1,500 remaining women have not had their screening history audited? So whilst I'm, well, thank you, Deputy Shorter. Whilst, whilst I don't have a number, so I'm not going to give a number to the Oireachtas that could be a false number, um, I am saying that the cases that are with the National Cancer Registry that have not been notified to cervical check, I think we all had a view when we got up this morning, Deputy, that every case in, cervical, in the Cancer Registry with cervical cancer had been notified to cervical check. That is clearly not now the case, based on information given to me just before I came into here a number of hours ago. I obviously have been in here since, so I haven't been able to uh, secure further information. But, but, but yes, I expect it to be a considerable number. I don't have the exact number, but I, but I, but I don't disagree with your, um, with, your, with your maths in terms of the number of people diagnosed with cervical cancer. But I'm reluctant to put any information out that, that I simply don't have. Okay. And certainly is an appalling vista that is emerging in that regard, so the, the, there's even a greater number of people, it would seem, who haven't been audited, um, which is why we need further information on this over the coming days, Minister, and um, it's not enough just to say we're, you're setting up a, an inquiry. Look, apart from the women who have been diagnosed with cancer, I think we're all very conscious of all of the other thousands of women around the country who are really nervous about this and who are beginning to question the validity of a uh, smear test that they've had. And you've given some assurance to people about services being available and retests. Now, it's just been brought to my attention this evening that um, a person who made contact with cervical check uh, in order to arrange a, 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 a recheck of, of a, or a rescreening uh, of a smear, um, and this is what she was met with on this the cervical check website. It says, "Thank you for your email. Rescreening will be available. We are currently assessing the impact of the minister's announcement regarding rescreening." for clients of the cervical check programme. Further information on the implementation of this announcement will be provided in due course via the cervical check website. Now, Minister, would you agree with me that that response from cervical check is completely unacceptable? Um, it is entirely unsympathetic, entirely unhelpful from the point of view of people who are worried sick about their condition or their potential condition and, as I say, the, the validity of previous smear tests. Will you, do you agree with me that it's unacceptable and will you undertake to get that message changed in the morning? Yes, I absolutely agree it was unacceptable. I'm presuming, I, I'm presuming that was a message today, but, but, but yeah, that's okay. I mean, on the website, cervical check this evening, I just happen to have the, the printout that I brought in here to the chamber with me. I mean, question four, can I get a repeat cervical screening before my next test is due? Answer, the Minister for Health has announced that women can have repeat cervical screening if they wish to do so. We will set this up shortly and we'll post details on cervicalcheck.ie as soon as possible. Please bear in mind that cervical screening tests cannot be repeated within three months to allow cells to grow back and to get the best samples. So you must wait a minimum of three months if you've had a recent cervical screening. And as I said to the House earlier, and I say this to reassure, to, to reassure that person who's contacted you, uh, the HSE uh, clinic, GP clinical advisor, Dr. David Hanlon, has been in contact with GP representative bodies. I expect the practicalities as to how that work will work to be posted on the Cervical Check website uh, this week. And I'm, I'm sure you didn't mean it, but just when you said to simply set up an inquiry and for that to be lateral words to that effect, I, I'm not suggesting, but just in case, that's certainly not what I'm saying either. Uh, democratic accountability and the work of the Oireachtas committees, and indeed this, this chamber and anywhere else, should absolutely continue. And I will continue to give all of the information that I have as I have it, and indeed will engage with you, your grouping, and others, your party, in relation to how best to put a structure in place um, to go forward and get these answers. Mr. To clarify, what I read out there is a response to an email. Okay, so that response needs to change rapidly. Um, Minister, the Civil Liability Amendment Bill uh, was passed uh, last November and a key provision was to force doctors to tell patients about mistakes that had been made. Um, 
Late on the government amendment, uh, the government brought an amendment to make this voluntary rather than mandatory, and the Minister for Justice recognised the input of his colleague, the Minister for Health, in changing that from mandatory to voluntary. Now you're committing to introducing mandatory uh, disclosure. What has changed in the meantime, and why did you think it was okay last November to suggest that you would uh, water this down and move from mandatory to voluntary? No, it's, it's an important, que important question, and I'm, I'm happy, to, happy to be in a position to answer it. I am fully committed to open disclosure. A patient should always have a right uh, to be provided with honest, open and prompt communication. That's already underpinned in the Medical Practitioner's Code of Conduct, not exactly a, a flimsy document, but I accept it clearly doesn't happen on the ground, and we've seen that in recent days. The idea was that in the Civil Liability <laughs> Amendment Act, you would deal with the voluntary open disclosure underpinned in legislation for all incidences within the health service. But I did say explicitly, and Minister Flanagan did say on the record of the House, and I said in correspondence, to Deputy Daly in November of last year that we would be proceeding to mandatory open disclosure for serious reportable incidents and I've clarified now that, that will absolutely include screening. It didn't happen last November, Minister. Finally, look, I want to say I am shocked that the 162 women at the centre of this scandal have, st have still not all been contacted. I expected after you set up the, the expert group that those people, those women would be contacted by Friday last. If the number is 162, it should be a manageable number to make contact with. I cannot believe that still, five days later, those women have not all been contacted. How many more? How many have not yet been contacted? And can you give us an assurance that tomorrow, at the very latest, they will all be engaged with? I just, I just literally asked for the latest information, um, Deputy Shortall, and before we came into this chamber, um, 113 uh, women who had been contacted and offered appointments. But yes, I want every woman contacted uh, very, very quickly, and I'll provide a further update tomorrow in relation to the numbers as well. I understand that there may be difficulty in contacting some people. I'm not excusing that, but 113 is the number that I had available now.